Hi there and welcome. I got two boards from uh, what is supposed to be a military computer and um, I'm just going to go through it quickly and uh, we'll see what, what is included and whether it's actually military. I've tried of course to uh, google this board on the, on the internet but I couldn't find any information whatsoever. Obviously these boards, uh, I have this one here and I have another one uh, here and uh, obviously these are for uh, plug-in. We have a double euro connector down here uh, at the back and um, there is a funny little uh, power plug uh, in the middle here and uh, let's see if we can zoom in and uh, I think we can. We have the two euro connectors and these are obviously uh, for power. I guess in the in the back plane that this thing plugs into uh, there are some uh, springy gold connectors here so that uh, when you push it in all the way back uh, it will get uh, powered on. I'm not sure whether this is hot plug or not uh, because normally with hot plug you would connect power first before the um, before the data pins here so uh, I'm not quite sure but it could be uh, particularly because there's this thing in the middle here poking out um, which would I guess uh, connect ground first and also uh, if we take a look later on the components themselves we have a lot of uh, 74 LS 245s uh, down here and I think they might be used for some kind of a bus uh, isolation so uh, yeah it could be hot plug but I'm not 100% sure so uh, yeah uh, if we just flip it around and uh, zoom in a little bit on the on the top half of the board um, like that and uh, yeah what we have here is of course uh, a really big CPU in a ceramic package and uh, this is the Motorola 68010 this is a 32-bit uh, CPU and uh, I've programmed these before um, and they are really 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 lovely uh, to program these in assembly is, is, is almost a high-level language they are so beautiful to program but of course uh, the, with the advent of uh, compilers, people didn't really care about the assembly language. So uh, the Motorola 68000 series uh, CPU was um, was uh, killed by the ARM chip. The ARM, of course, is a RISC chip, uh, reduced instruction set, and uh, because of the uh, C compilers and stuff like that, um, it was not necessary to use a lot of uh, gates and a lot of hardware internally in the chip to make the instructions really uh, nice. So uh, the ARM actually has a I shouldn't say rubbish instruction set, but it has an instruction set that is uh, hard to understand for, for human beings. But anyway, um, this chip was uh, really powerful. Uh, this one is running at 8 MHz. There's a clock here, 16 MHz clock, that is divided down by this uh, guy here. It's a little TTL gate. Um, and uh, that's the main CPU, really. Um, we have, of course, around it, we have a lot of uh, TTL gates for glue logic. And uh, all these little 16-pin uh, dip uh, packages contain uh, AMD GALs or PALs. So these are programmable logic and they are often used to uh, save uh, 7.4 series chips. Uh, typically they are used for something like address decoding and uh, things like that. Up here, as I said, we have a lot of uh, 7.4 LS 245s which are possibly used to isolate the bus here uh, during a uh, hot plug. But, uh, as I said, I'm not 100% sure about that. Um, then we have another two ceramic packages here. Uh, the first one is a MC68450, which is a DMA controller. A DMA controller is uh, typically used for stuff like uh, video access to the main memory, or used for, for data getting in and out from a hard drive or a floppy drive really, really quickly. Uh, so this board has one of those, uh, and uh, next to it there's a MC68451 and the 451 is a MMU memory management unit and uh, that is used to uh, generate virtual memory so as you can see compared to the 6802 or 6502 or the Zilog Z80 the Motorola 68000 CPU is uh, one step up uh, using this chip here we have um, virtual memory so uh, different uh, programs can run simultaneously and uh, each in their own uh, memory bank. So this will generate an exception or an interrupt or whatever you want to call it um, if one program is writing into another program's memory space. 
So uh, this is uh, ideal for multitasking. Up here near this connector we have some um, 75 series chips and they are RS422 or RS485 uh, um, bus interfaces. Then we have a Rockwell uh, 6551 and uh, that is a serial port uh, chip. And uh, that one has its own little clock here which is tied down with some uh, dental floss and uh, glued. Uh, apart from that we have a lot of 74LS series here. These are bus again 245 and a 373 uh, bus interface chips. And uh, I guess they're interfacing to this thing up here because uh, here we have uh, 512k of uh, RAM plus uh, two chips here that are spare or used for error correction or error detection or CRC. So uh, this memory bank here is uh, better, safer than uh, a normal memory bank. Uh, just below that we have a uh, National Semiconductors NS32809 chip which is a 1 megabit DRAM controller. So this chip is handling these ch uh, memory chips uh, directly. So that means basically the interface to the, to the, to the, to the main CPU is quite clean. Uh, everything is taken care of by this chip here. Below that we have the, the ROM uh, and there's a odd and an even because uh, these are 8 bit each and the interface to this chip is 16 bit. So it's reading uh, 2 times 8 bit at a time. This ROM is, um, let's see how big is it. These are 16k bytes each, so a total of uh, 32 uh, kilobytes. As we shall see later, there is some uh, basic peripheral I.O. on this board. There's a floppy drive controller, for instance. So um, this is not the operating system in 32k. This is just basic. The, um, this is just basically a bootloader. Now underneath here. On the second part of the PCB, if we just move down here, there we go. Uh, down here we have um, an NEC D7220 uh, in a white ceramic package. Although this chip is a ceramic and the main CPUs are ceramic, all the TTLs are 7.4 series chips. So these are not um, mission critical boards. If they were mission critical, uh, they would be 54 series uh, instead of 74 series. So uh, basically this board here is a standard PC or standard uh, Unix machine or whatever operating system that was running on it. Uh, but anyway, um, we have uh, a chip here that generates video and uh, I remember this chip from back in the, in the day and uh, this can easily handle uh, 80 by 25 characters. Just here to the right of it, we have some uh, video memory and uh, there is a total of 192 kilobytes. So uh, this must be a graphics display because uh, 80 by uh, 24 characters would be just 2 k bytes of RAM. So we have uh, quite high resolution. I haven't uh, taken a look but I think uh, 10, 1024 by 768 is definitely possible uh, using this amount of RAM. Uh, unless of course it's uh, color. Um, but uh, yeah, um, I don't think I will ever be able to uh, power this thing on. I have no data about it whatsoever. So um, yeah, it would be nice to be able to get a schematic and uh, try to power it up and get some video and see what it uh, actually does. But uh, I don't think that will be possible. Uh, the PCB also is a very nice quality and uh, it's six layers. So it's uh, definitely not possible to uh, trace it or it would take forever. So as I said down here is the video uh, circuit and uh, just below it there's a, there's a floppy disk controller from uh, Siemens. It doesn't take much, it takes a couple of trimmers here which are of course adjusted nicely and uh, good with some uh, silicone stuff. And uh, my guess is that this plug here is a floppy disk controller. Uh, to the left of that we have a TMS9914 and that is a GPIB bus interface chip and um, we have just below here some uh, 75162 and 75160 and these are the interface board for the GPIB bus, uh, sorry the interface chips. These are the interface chips and uh, this um, TMS chip is the controller itself. So again uh, all the processing has been offloaded from the main CPU uh, and done locally, uh, both for the graphics, 
for the floppy drive, for the GPIB bus and the memory access and the memory management and so forth. Everything has been uh, offloaded from the main CPU so that the main CPU can, uh, can take care of uh, whatever it has to do at full speed. Then we have the final chip down here which is an MC68230 and uh, that is a parallel port chip and uh, it also has a timer. So basically what we have on this PCB is a, a complete Motorola 68010 uh, 32-bit uh, computer system. We have uh, the main CPU, the main RAM, we have the BIOS, we have video and the video RAM and we have a floppy drive controller. So this board is basically a standalone computer. If we take a look at the other board, it would make sense that this board is um, some kind of an I.O. board or some kind of a peripheral board. And um, it basically is. On the, on the left side here we again have the 74HCT 245s and uh, these are bus um, isolation or bus drivers and we have a lot of these. Then again we have a DRAM controller and we have additional DRAM here and this is another uh, 512K. So if you include this board um, on the back plane together with the main board you have now um, uh, one megabyte of RAM, which was uh, pretty good back in uh, 1995 when uh, this board was assembled. Okay, so apart from additional RAM, we have also here some uh, uh, static RAM. And we have 16K of that. And next to it, we have a hard disk controller chip. So it makes sense that um, data in and out to the hard disk would be buffered here in a high-speed RAM. Um, this is, uh, let's see, this is uh, 150 nanoseconds, so it's not really that quick. But anyway, um, this, uh, this board here has additional RAM and a hard disk controller. On the right here, we have another I.O. chip, uh, an MC68230. And uh, we have down here uh, a battery and a real-time clock. The real-time clock is from Harris, it's an ICM7170. Uh, um, and finally, if we just move down here, look at the lower part of this board. We have additional hard disk controller logic here. Um, the clock is 10 megahertz. And uh, this little chip here is, uh, let me see, this is a data separator. So this handles uh, the serial data coming in from the hard disk. Apart from that, uh, we have another GPIB bus with the uh, line drivers and um, some uh, RS4224485 uh, uh, chips down here. And uh, finally we have a little Motorola 68450 again, which is a direct memory access controller. So um, this would basically be uh, a ginormous um, hard disk controller. Not only does it take care of uh, getting data in and out using these two chips here, it also handles uh, uh, dumping all the data into the main memory without the CPU, uh, main CPU itself uh, doing anything. So uh, as you can see, these two boards uh, here would make up a really, really powerful computer. And uh, I have used HP workstations using the Motorola 68000 CPU running HP Unix. And uh, I think they would be fairly similar in the structure as, as, as these. So yeah, these ports, I'm quite sure, are military in nature. They are plug-in, and they're basically they are 4 euro card size. Uh, I have never seen this form factor before, but uh, they look really, really solid. Unfortunately, I don't think, as I said earlier, I don't think I can get these up and running. But I could possibly make a Unix machine from scratch using these ICs. So if I get the time, I think I will be looking at some uh, Motorola 68000 stuff. Of course, this IC chipset uh, is the big brother of the chip used in the Atari ST and the big brother to the chipset used in the uh, Commodore Amiga. So yeah, I guess that's it. Uh, thank you for watching my little video. And um, if you enjoyed it, you can subscribe below and uh, I'll be showing more videos uh, like this in the future. So yeah, thank you for watching and uh, see you again soon.